Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, we still have quite a bit of crowd strike to talk about today. Turns out the total number of affected systems was about 8.5 million. These numbers are pretty consistent between what Microsoft noted when they looked at Windows crash reports, as well as what came from CrowdStrike. Overall, this appears to be about 1% of all Windows systems that are currently in use. Recovery is still ongoing. Looks like most organizations sort of got back to business, meaning that uh, whatever sort of affects uh, the customers, the public facing parts appear to be for the most part fixed. Delta is sort of one airline that appears to be affected more than others, but uh, the delays and cancellations they saw today are apparently more due to sort of rollover effects from cancellations on Friday and Saturday. You also keep getting occasional reports and uh, some security vendors have also reported seeing phishing attacks that are leveraging uh, this particular incident. This is something you have to be worried about even if you are totally not affected by this particular event. If you don't run CrowdStrike because your users, given all the attention being paid to this incident, may still be falling for these uh, phishing attacks. So far, these phishing attacks, for the most part, are just trying to distribute malware that they claim are fixes for this problem. If you think about it, if you're actually affected by it, you probably can't apply that fix because the system is down. So they're already targeting more companies and individuals that are not affected by the attack. You also see uh, sporadic uh, registrations for related domains. Hard to tell how many of them are malicious. There were a couple reports that some of them were related uh, to some malware campaigns or command control servers. There is at least one that solicits a business for a lawyer. The remainder is parked for right now or has some benign content. CrowdStrike on their response page did also tease that they're experimenting with a opt-in method to fix the issue. Doesn't say what this exactly will involve and uh, how this will exactly make things simpler. At this point, I haven't really seen anything but the teaser. It's possible that they're sort of working on this with some of their larger uh, customers. So this is not necessarily something public facing. There are also a couple organizations that had good luck uh, solving some of the BitLocker issues by using barcodes or QR codes. Essentially, you're printing the recovery key on paper using a barcode or QR code, and then use a handheld reader that will basically plugged in to the system via USB, it emulates a keyboard, and then enter uh, these recovery codes, which may save some time, also may th make things a little bit more reliable, given that probably people are getting tired of typing in these long random uh, codes all the time. Interestingly, the register has a story that uh, there appeared to have been some issues with Linux and uh, CrowdStrike in June, where people did report some kernel panics. Now, this appeared to be not so widespread, so that's kind of why it flew a little bit under the radar, but it does appear to be CrowdStrike related. I still have to verify, but it's very likely that on Linux, CrowdStrike does use similar kernel drivers as they're using on Windows. On Mac OS, of course, this is not possible. These issues were reported both with Debian-based system as well as Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux, if you're not familiar with, is sort of the successor of SendOS and related to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And if you're interested in the keynote from last week's Sans Fire, I just checked and it is now available online. Just follow the link at the top of the Internet Storm Center's homepage. 
So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And if you have any of these CrowdStrike phishing emails or such, please send them to us. The best way to send them to us is via our contact form. That way they're not going through any of the mail filters on our end, which of course may block any of these attachments. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.